Derek, uh, Brian's got his pilot's license. Has he offered to take you up? And if he did, would you? Oh, no. I'm not going up there. I pray for him, though. I pray that he's safe. It seems like it's been going well. So, you know, it's a cool things that guys, um, hobbies that, that guys have. I feel like it's a cool one. But I won't be up there at all. Um, like chill, watch movies, work out, the simple stuff. I don't get too crazy with it. I ain't flying on planes, I know that. I have to pick up some other ones as time go on, but flying the plane ain't one of them. What's Terrell uh, and his opportunity as head coach on Saturday? What's your, what's your regular interaction with him and how excited are you for him to get this opportunity? Yeah, Coach T is a, a great coach. It was very cool. Um, coach very able given the opportunity, um, and I um, feel like he's, he's worked hard for it. You know uh, all his guys, they love him on the D line, and um, you know it's a it's a blessing, and um, hope it pays for it to get him another opportunity when that time comes. How much do you value the practice time you get during special teams when you work with your position coach yeah. on your own? Yeah, just trying to come out and, and get better, um, and um, get just get some work in um, when they're doing special teams, and you know anything that I feel like I need to work on, just just try to do that at that time. Predetermine what you're working on in the in the locker room, or no, 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 just just whatever comes to my mind that I want to do, I try to do it. Derek, uh, you're a guy who's you know the fields here grass, uh, Nissan Stadium had been grass. They're making the change over to turf. Uh, having worked in the on the same turf in the bubble, mm -hmm. uh, what's your thoughts on being you know ha facing this season, being on that this year? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we got to play on. It. That's what the field is now. Um, well, I've been we've been on it for a year since last year, so kind of used to it, um, and then get a feel for it as the season goes on. Um, once you start playing on it, going full speed and and tackling and all that, but you know we played on turf throughout the years. Uh, Colts and then Houston Texans have turf, so something way really too hard to get used to. How different is it from some of the other turfs in the, in the, in the league? I think I think you got to keep water in it. I don't think it has the uh, the. Uh, I think it's more like coconut pebbles or something like that. It's, it's different from um, the normal turf. So I think that's a, a, a little different from it. So we'll see how it goes when we get out there. You, you look at this offense you know, over the last four years or so, it's revolved around you. Yeah. How much pride do you take in the fact that you know, you're the, the focal point of the offense? Man, I mean, I think it's going to take everybody. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to uh, – Help this franchise and um, you know be a big part of this offense. But you know it's going to take everybody. We're going to need everybody on hand. Everybody make plays and you know it's enough ball to go around for everybody and get get opportunities to help us um, each and every week. And um, you know we got some great guys to make plays for. So excited about that. Do you feel like that puts a lot on your shoulders? The fact that you're guaranteed to, you're always going to get the ball and then they they run to set up the pass and stuff. Um, I embrace it all. I mean, I don't. It don't matter. Uh, pressure makes diamonds. So, I'm. So I ain't. I ain't tripping at all. So whatever it takes, you know, I'm gonna go out there and do what I can to help us win. Has Tim created ways to lighten the box more frequently with with formations, with personnel, stuff like that? Um, just been awesome to uh, learn and um, being this new offense challenge us to to know to know a lot of things. So it's just been fun with that and. Um, Coming out here as an offense, you know I'm not going to give you anything, but um, just coming out here, learning, um, putting the plays together um, from the meetings, guys uh, making explosive plays, um, guys improving every day, and then whatever new plays that we got, come out here and work on them and try to get the best out of each and every day. Derek, Tim was obviously in the building last year, but as a play caller, what are maybe these defining attributes that you'll notice this year? Um, I think the energy Tim brings every day. You know, uh, you know that's the first thing you know I can think of. The energy he brings, um, uh, making sure that we're, we're locked in every day. Um, you know, trying to give guys opportunity to make plays in different ways, which I think is is very cool. And you know a lot of guys um, are excited about that and just come out here and um, put the plays together. We're on the field. With that tempo on offense, you talk to Tannehill and the receivers. They say it creates a sense of urgency. Does it, does it do the same thing for you? Like as a running back, how does that tempo affect you? Yeah, you gotta have a sense of urgency. Um, you know, especially um, the way we want to run the offense and the and the things you want to do. I think everybody you know has to have a sense of urgency at um, each position, and um, I think um, everybody feels that. Everybody knows what to expect, and then go out there with a sense of urgency to get it done. Derek, do you remember your first preseason game?
like so yeah, long ago, obviously, but the feelings yeah. you had, and then maybe some of the stuff you can share with the rookies going into this weekend. Yeah, I was very antsy. I um I couldn't wait. Uh, couldn't wait to get in the game. Um, you know, playing in the NFL has always been a dream of mine. I know these guys are excited. Um, they've been talking about it, so I can't wait to see them go out there and ball. So, I mean, I know, I know the feelings, and anything I can help with them, I'm, I, I try to help. But, yeah, it's, it's a fun moment, uh, very cool, and, you know, you just want to go out there and play well. Eric, you got a lot of new faces on this offense. How's the cohesive family group as you go on practice after practice here in the first couple of weeks? Yeah, it's been it's been um, been good, man. Guys working, um, trying to get better, working great collectively. It's a it's a new group, and um, you know just trying to you know um, you know get used to our culture and, and and how we do things and playing to our standard. I feel like those guys are trying to do it every day and um, are getting better every day. And that's all you should want. Derek, at this point in camp, at age 29, how does it feel different from age 25, 26? I still feel 21, <laughs> but no, no, um, you know. It's not really that much different. Work is work. No matter what age you are, you got to come out here and put the work in um, to get the results. And that's always been the main focus since I uh, came in this league. And that's what it'll be until uh, I'm done playing. But, you know, the, the work is the work no matter what, what age you are and, you know, how you feel. You got to come out here and work and get it done. There's an assumption that when running backs hit 30, that they're not going to be the same anymore. And I do wonder how much do you look at other past running backs or feel that you're different from the stereotype of running. Yeah, I mean, I can't worry about somebody else. I'm my own man, I'm my own person. Um, I mean, everybody has their own story, their own journey, and I'm just focused on mine. Um, you know, whatever it says, I can't worry about that. Worry about here, come out here getting better. Be the best player I can this year, and um, continue to grow and get better. Getting excited for that first preseason game as a rookie. At what point now in your career do you start to get excited for the season start? I'm always excited when football comes back around. Been inside since I was a little boy, and uh, I won't stop. There was a big cheer in the huddle at the end of practice. What was that about? Say it again? At the end of practice, you guys were in the huddle, there was a big cheer, yell, it sounded positive. Do you remember what that was? Oh, uh, Haley, um, one of our strength uh, coaches, um, co guest coach, put on staff for the year. And that's very cool to have um, a woman on staff and um, uh, empowerment for, for young women to, you know, see that you know there's a chance for women to work in the NFL and um, have an impact and I think that's very cool for her to get the opportunity to be here um, she's been doing a great job so we're all just excited for her. You practiced more than usual in, in camp is that related to the third day being a walkthrough is that related to being wanting to be out there for the for the new offense is that because you got tired of the sand pit? No it's the new <laughs> offense man you gotta get gotta get reps in um and um you know get, get used to everything and you know, wanting to be out there with the guys, but just really just, just getting the reps in with the new offense and you know, getting used to everything and come out here and trying to get better. Are you happy with where the offense is relative to the competition with the defense right now? Um, I mean, all you can want as offense is come out here and give effort every day, um, each is every, every single one of us, and try to get better. Some days are going to be better than others. Some days are going to be worse than others. But at the end of the day, don't you have a growth mindset and try to come out here and do the best you can, then everything will happen the way it's supposed to. But everything is not going to be smooth every day. That's the point of training camp. All right. Uh, how did it maybe differ this year from the past, and how much do you think it's helped you at this point in camp? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was very different, you know, just a different setting, you know, different training. Um, different ways of taking care of my body. Um, you know, I feel good. I feel like I was in better shape, you know, coming into this camp. Um, and I think it shows. Um, but uh, I was able to, you know, really just put together a full off season, you know, of training, strictly training, and not necessarily just rehabbing something or coming off of surgery. So I think that's like the biggest difference for me coming into this off season. Do you feel like this is the best shape you've ever been in for training camp? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, definitely. Um, you know, I felt like I had a good, uh, good, um, Conditioning run, and then come day one, you know, I was ready to go. And um, I think it's shown, you know, with me being out there every day. I think my first, you know, three uh, camps, you know, I kind of went down maybe a day or two, you know, early or whatever it was, you know. But this offseason, you know, I've been able to, you know, stay out there day by day and be out there with the guys. Anything different for you size wise? You're bigger, you're feeling weight coming in the season, and so that you got back even more durable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, probably more leaner, you know, uh, probably put on more muscle. Uh, I'm pretty much the same weight, but like I said, just bigger, you know, muscle-wise. 
And um, I think that's helped me on the field, like with my play, you know, as far as being physical, you know, whether that's at the line of scrimmage or, uh, you know, at the top of the route, which is where the routes went at mainly. How much of a measuring stick is it for you, practice to practice, knowing you have against? A guy like DeAndre. Mm, it's, it's a it's a big uh, measuring stick for me, you know, just because he's a guy, you know, that put up great numbers yearly, you know, since he's been in the league, um, and he's not. I don't think he's going to slow down. So uh, with him being one of those top guys, you know, one of those top five receivers in the league, it is a great measuring stick, you know, to go against him, you know, and see what he uh, can get from me, you know, where I could be better at or where I can make him better at. So uh, I look. I mean, I've been looking forward to it, you know, every day. It definitely can't come, you know, slow any day. Can't come off slow. Christian, you have a lot to prove this year. You think you are just taking your game to the next level? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm coming into every season, you know, with something to prove. But definitely this year. Uh, besides, I mean, not really worry about contract talk, but just as a corner, you know, I feel like I am one of those top guys in this league. And, um, I mean, I got to go out there and show it week to week. Obviously, I know that, but I feel like my talent is there, uh, and I feel like I can go with the best of them, you know. Whenever I went up against one of those top receivers in the league, you know, I pretty much held my own since I've been in the league, but it's just about doing it consistently. The coaches have said that they preach to you consistency. Mm -hmm. How important is it to you to be consistent? It's very important. Um, you know, they could drill it in my head, you know, as much as they want, but, you know, I got to be the one to want to be consistent. Uh, I got to do things off the field consistently, um, and that's going to lead to, you know, consistently me playing, you know. Um, obviously, only on Sundays is the surface level, but, you know, I got to do everything about eating right, uh, taking care of my body on my off days. Uh, doing what I can after practice, you know, stuff like that, you know, that's going to like push me to be consistently day by day. You mentioned being right, um, being lean, putting on muscle. Mm -hmm. Have you done any dietary changes? I know that pops, you know, that shrimp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Have you changed the diet? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, just not eating as, you know, as much uh, like meat as I can. Uh, I mean, as I should, you know, I, I did, you know, in the past. But, uh, you know, eating certain things, you know, uh, I uh, got a chef this past off season, And uh, he, he's been in contact with our nutritionist, you know, to put together a plan on what uh, will keep me uh, – keep me ready to go week to week. So uh, definitely watching what I eat, you know, and, you know, like I said, just being consistent with eating three meals a day, you know, not eating, you know, sn uh, a lot of junk food, all that, you know, comes into play. What was the junk food that was the tough give up? Fried food. Fried, I mean, it's not junk food, but, you know, just fried food, you know, I feel like, you know, that kind of, you know, had an effect on me. Uh, I don't eat as much snacks, you know, as I used to. Uh, just little things like that, you know. Uh, just trying to have, make sure that my body is in the best shape that it can be, you know, week to week, you know. Where do you feel like this secondary is taking the biggest steps here to start training the game? Uh, communication and our confidence, you know. Uh, I feel like we were always uh, a good group, but uh, Coach Harris has came in, Coach Book, you know, they've all uh, seen our, they see our potential as a group, you know, not just individually. And, and once we, you know, communicate better, you know, it's, it leads to less bust, you know, in the back end and us being on the same page to where we're confident, we're gonna, you know, just building trust in each other. We're confident in each other, you know, that we're all gonna do our job. And I think that's where we, you know, took the next step. And like I said, everyone out there, you know, flying around, playing with confidence, you know, that's, you got confidence, you know, you can go against anybody, you know, and that's the biggest step I think we took. How important has Sean's voice been in the secondary, just having somebody who wasn't here last year kind of helping guys out? Yeah, yeah, it's been big. Uh, me and him, you know, just been building, you know, uh, together. Uh, I feel like we, you know, kind of in the same position, you know, where we're trying to prove ourselves in this league. You know, we've shown that we can play with the top guys. And, uh, you know, we just try to build off each other, you know, on and off the field. And um, I feel like it's definitely, like I said, we kind of growing together, you know, because, you know, my first few years, you know, I always had like an older vet you know, that pretty much know what he's doing. He has his regimen or whatever. And um, like I said, uh, me and him are growing, you know, and trying to be a leader for the young guys, you know, um, in the meeting room, you know, and on the field. Are you starting to think of yourself as the better? Is it with KB still there, you don't get to think that one? Uh, I mean, I, I pretty much see myself as a vet now, you know, because sometimes, you know, we meet as just corners and sometimes we meet together. So when we are meeting as just corners, you know, I got to make sure that I'm vocal to the younger guys and uh, making sure, you know, showing them that I'm on my stuff, you know, knowing the calls, making the checks and stuff like that to show them, you know, that's how I got to go. You know, we can't always rely on KB and Hook, you know, to make every call. And like I said, just being the voice in the meeting room and on the field, you know, I feel like I've uh, pretty much shown that during camp and just got to continue to show it.
some of the other receivers that have maybe gotten better and maybe have impressed you so far in camp? Um, obviously, you know, Traylon, you know, he took a big leap this year, this, well, this off season. Um, Kyle, he looks good. You know, I feel like all our receivers are pretty much, you know, giving us a good look, you know, uh, whether it's different things going against them. And, uh, you know, Hop is a new face, you know, and he's a veteran guy. He's seen it all. So uh, he's going to go against my weaknesses. And, you know, obviously I have my strengths, you know, that I'm going to use to my advantage. So, I mean, really just going against all of them has, you know, allowed me to watch the film and see where I can improve at going against them. We asked a couple of guys just about their thoughts on Coach T's opportunity on Saturday. What kind of a coach is he in your eyes? Uh, coach T, he's a great coach. Uh, you know, he's a guy, you know, that treats everybody the same. He's going to give everybody a fair uh, opportunity. Um, he's very vocal to the uh, D linemen, you know, and letting them know where they went wrong. Uh, and he's a guy, like I said, he wants everybody to be better. So, uh, you know, I'm excited for his opportunity, you know, coming forward this Saturday. Have you ever been a part of a defense that has dominated in, as much in camp as it feels like this defense has against the offense? Honestly, no. I, I, see, I just think uh, the energy is different, you know, as a whole for the defense. Um, you know, we've been pretty good these past few years, but uh, I think it kind of like showed once the season, it hasn't really showed like, you know, in camp. And I feel like every day pretty much so far we've brought it. So uh, that's kind of our goal. We know that uh, we're going to have to win games, you know, this come up, upcoming season because obviously, you know, we're going to have to shut down a lot of great offenses, you know, going against those guys. So uh, it's good to, you know, feel that energy and not and to know that it's not just brought on Sunday. We're going to bring it every day. And that's why I could like trust them and rely on them. Last one. Practice now with this defense. What, what about somebody who like stands out to you? It's like, wow, he's having a game. On defense, um, I mean, I definitely say you know Aziz. He's definitely made some plays. Um, I'm excited to see him go. Um, and really, the, really the front whole front seven. You know, they, they've been going crazy this whole uh, camp, and I'm excited to see them go come the season because that's only going to help us out in the back end. So uh, definitely the front seven. You know, they definitely stood out to me. Uh, uh, Big T yesterday, and then the no, no new announcements today, Teresa. Sorry. So, so no cheers there at, at the end of practice there for for something for a new addition or a full time addition to the training staff. Uh, to strength and conditioning. Okay. Uh, so we've decided to uh, keep Haley on. She did a fantastic job. So uh, we'll get you guys all that information. But uh, that that was just you know, wanted to let the team know. So that's what we did. Has he's been from the start of camp? Mm -hmm. Like he's around the football a lot. Yeah, he is. I think just, you know, his intensity and his, his leadership has been really good. Um, again, I've always enjoyed the conversations with him off the field. So, you know, sitting down, having lunch, having breakfast, you know, getting to know him personally. Uh, so I've enjoyed coaching him. And, again, he's playing with some speed out there. And, again, not that it was perfect every snap, but you know I think he's understanding what we're trying to get done, and I, I like the communication that he's playing with. Christian Fulton mentioned the challenge going up against DeAndre Hopkins, mm -hmm. also the other wide receivers. How have you seen kind of that challenge of the receivers and the, the DBs progress? Over yeah, I mean, it's back and forth. You know, This is who we have to go against in training camp. And so I've said this before, whether it's an offensive lineman or defensive lineman, you're trying to build a profile for that player to give yourself a chance to go out there and do your job, who the skill set is, what, what the player's strengths and maybe the areas of focus are, are no different than receivers and DBs especially. You know, is it Kyle Phillips? Is it DeAndre? Is it Traylon? Um, all different types of play styles, alignments, routes. Some guys run routes a little differently. And so you know, I think that that can be good. You know, that's part of the reason we like practicing against other teams is you know, you're going to see other players with different skill sets and have a minimal time to figure that out uh, through the course of practice or the course of two days. When the defense has a day like today, does that make it tougher to evaluate the offense? or, or Like, what do you mean? Like, I guess, what day? Where they jumped off sides and gave up a 30-yard play on the second play of the day? Or, no, I mean, again, I didn't move the ball down, so... You know, well, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily agree that this was some like dominant performance by the defense. You know, there was plays and whether we move it up or we hit some plays or you know, defense jumped off sides twice, didn't cover anybody in the, uh, the hurry up again. So your evaluation is probably a little different than mine. There was some good on both sides. Um, you know, we get and, and the first group with an interception in a two minute. 
but you know the other groups were were pretty functional and uh, much different than yesterday, much better than yesterday. Um, and, and so that's why we practice and we get down there and you know we're able to execute our, the hurricane and just run it in there and you know work that operation and try to create those situations where I see fit. Last year, you, I remember it can't be can't refer to Jack as Dr. Gibby. So he obviously kind of caught your attention then. How much has he grown in, in just one year? I think physically. I think physically has probably been his biggest, um, you know, improvement. Just I think is, you know, I think he's moving better. I think he's just running better. He's a year older, more mature, maybe a different weight program. Again, he, he transferred and, you know, probably just got to Minnesota whenever he did. A short amount of time there, you know, preparing for the, for the draft, the, his pro day, things of that nature. And, you know, probably just having a year under his belt of not having to train for for the combine and just work and and get ready for for football so i think that's i've seen the biggest improvement we see different vets work on specific during special teams that they're not involved in how much do you like the way they attack stuff during that and the cumulative effect of that over the course of the season i imagine can be hope sustained. that it pays off and i think just being smart um you know that's a good time for receivers to spot up with quarterbacks or you know working on some unique plays or special plays between, you know, in our case, uh, Derek uh, and the quarterback or different ball handling. Um, so hopefully that's that's something that over the course of, of the season and, you know, hit some of those specific things or, you know, try to take Chig and Gift today and just, you know, work with them specifically. Myself, we got a lot of people out here. We got a lot of coaches. So um, hopefully everybody can grab and, and, and make sure that everybody's working. Is there a position or a position group that's especially important when it comes to preseason games for evaluating maybe compared to practices? Um, so the question is, do, you, do the games help a certain position better? Well, I think defensively you got to be able to tackle. I mean, I think that that's certainly you can see where, you know, um, some of the skill players maybe can, can do something with the football, see who can break some tackles. I think running backs – uh, are critical to be able to take that contact and, and take hits and, and take care of the football. Uh, so skill players, um, I think it's they're all important, but I, I think the tackling is really where, you know, we'll see guys who, who can come down and, and, and tackle and uh, get off blocks and, and stay on their feet. What kind of goes in the decision on who plays, maybe who doesn't in the preseason? Seeing where guys are. Health-wise, seeing where guys are with the work they've gotten out here, trying for you know allow me to, to to identify the work that they've gotten in, and then say, okay, well this is what we haven't gotten in. Let's get this player some some more work in in this particular situation. Was the card and stuff Chicago? No, not yet. That's that's just oh the card and stuff. No, th those are just periods that we just try to exchange that. Um, Maybe uh, the offense isn't going to be able to run eight screens through the course of practice. So we'll just jog through the, the screens instead of having the, a coach or a backup offensive lineman be a, you know, a pass rusher. We just you know, bring some of the other guys down there, explain to them what we're looking for, that this is just to, to, to service the offense or the defense may need eight plays empty and that they wouldn't get that. So it's kind of just a – Based on what we need, and Shane and Tim and, and and myself, just trying to figure out what that is, and it's a little break. You know, I mean, I think it's just a teaching progress that takes some of the speed off, some of the contact, some of the collisions, and allows us to, you know, work in a jog through pace. What Sorry. Well, again, there's times where you know you you have to use your ability, and that's his you know movement and. And, and being able to, to, to escape and run is, is something that, he, you know, he has to be able to do. Uh, but then also being able to keep his eyes downfield and being able to, to when guys break like they did today, I thought that was a really cool play there with Wiley, which would have been another long gain for the, for the offense if you're keeping score to run. Um, but I thought that was a really cool play, like just sliding over there and not just taking off and running, which he probably would have gained some good yards, but 
being able to look downfield and keep his eyes downfield, it really forces the defense into coming out of coverage or, or, or plastering. And then at that case, and then Malik's got to make a great decision and, and take off. What do you think Will Levis has improved on? Uh, well, I've seen him make some really good throws. I've seen uh, command at a huddle. You know, I think that just explaining to these quarterbacks that the other 10 players are responsible uh, for your performance. And so you need to, to, to make sure that they know where to line up. Sometimes guys make a mistake. And it's a lot of formation. But the quarterback's job is make sure that everybody's helping them do their job. Starts with lining up. The operation at the line of scrimmage, I think, is better. I've seen him move receivers into splits that, that they're supposed to be in. Um, you know, throwing, you know, with different speeds and layering the football or being able to, to you know, use his arm, arm talent when he has to and, and put it in there and, you know, tight windows. But, you know, again, there's some, some other things that have to, to improve. And, you know, as he progresses on and, and seeing, you know, out in front of crossers and things like that. Mike, you've said how uh, Malik has done a better job of carrying himself like an NFL quarterback uh, this season. What exactly are maybe some examples inside the building of what he's doing now that he's shown growth from year one to now? Well, I just think it's the way he walks in the building. I mean, I think that you know when he's there, and I'll just leave it at that. I, mean, I think that's the biggest thing is that you you, you know when, when he's in the building. That, you know, there's, there's a presence to him, you know, kind of bopping around and, that that's the biggest thing to me is, you know, that you know he's there and not not just not just being there. He's there. He's engaged. You, you, you hear him. You see him. You know, those are all positives. Tempo is one of the things you talked about. You wanted to see in the new offense. Have you seen what you hope to see? Well, we've always had tempo. You know, I mean, I think just being able to 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 have a presence. You know, just like we talked about with the with the quarterbacks, but having a, a presence to it, having a versatility to it, and and the, and the tempo is certainly one of those things, and being able to dictate that tempo and not just going fast for the sake of going fast, but you know, there's good work today, um, trying to take advantage of you know those situations when they're there, and then being able to back off and. You know, just having a, a lot of multiplicity and, and having versatility in our offense and, and working through some of those things in the run game. Mike, with the kicking competition where other guys seem to miss very much, it, what are you going to be looking for there beyond, I guess? Just Probably just ball flight consistency, right, if they go in. But, what you know, I mean, we have to look at right now we haven't really rushed. We really rushed them. So the ball flight on some of those longer kicks, leg strength, um, you know, Look at golf, right? You know, man, it's just trying to straight ball flight and not, you know, curving them in. I think you just risk, you know, missing them every now and then and you know, trying to, I think, a consistent ball flight. How important is length strength to that? Craig didn't really feel like it was a deciding factor when we first talked to him, but you kind of see in these two minute drills how important having some range well, can be. Yeah, I think that. The further you can kick them and the straighter that you can kick them, uh, the better. Um, you know, I just – making them is the most important, but, but certainly having the ability to, to make some of those longer kicks could, could always help you. You know, the difference between, you know, getting to the you know, 35 and getting to the 40 is a big deal. You see that they're all the same. You're right around that same area. You could put it down in 42-yard line and – put 25 seconds on the clock every single time we, we almost do the drill. So th those are those are critical yards. Mike, there was a lot of talk yesterday after you said that Coach T was going to be coaching on Saturday about the opportunity that it gives a minority potential head coach to show the league and the owners who make those decisions what somebody could do. Was that part of your thought process? And as a coach, do you think about how Actions like this can help minority coaching candidates get head coaching jobs. Uh, one thing I can't, you know, concern myself with is what, you know, other people think or say. I did, my my intent was to do what was best for you know, 
T uh, in this situation. It wasn't to send any sort of message. This wasn't anything. You know, I did what I thought was was best for him and, and for us at this particular time. That that's what I wanted to do, and it's well deserved. It, it's earned. It's uh, you know. And, and again, even like today, we had him go through just talk to the officials about, you know, the officials meeting that happens 90 minutes before the game. And, you know, I didn't know what the hell to do the first time we met with the officials. They asked for the punt card. I'm like, well, where the hell's the punt card? You know what I mean, something little as that. And just, um, you know, just making sure that we, we, we give application to, to things that we're trying to, to coach and to teach and develop each one of our, our – coaches and players here. So George, you, you do have a big staff and you've added a lot of different diverse pieces. Is that something you've wanted to do as you grow as a coach? Or is well, that just something it's that the, kind of you know, diversity is critical. You know, diversity of ideas and diversity and personalities is critical. Uh, for me, it's always been about, you know, making sure that we can find a way to reach every player that we bring in here and, and having plenty of points of contact for our players, whether that's, um, with with Chick and Ijiasi, with Mitch and our player engagement, you know myself, you know Frank and his staff, our coaching staff, right? We ask that they find somebody that they can feel comfortable with and trust, you know, to, to reach out to. So that's the biggest thing for me is that you know, the diversity provides that. Uh, we're you know we're looking for the, the, the best candidates always, and um, and we'll do our best to continue to make sure that you know. We're, we're hiring, you know, based on merit, and and that's what we try to do. Will Tim be upstairs or on the sideline? For the I'm sorry? Will Tim Kelly be upstairs or on the sideline? Tim will be on the sideline. You told Sam to ask his question at the podium, but he's being shy. Don't you? Don't uh, you my phone he said out. TikTok. I got nervous. <laughs> uh, Maybe. Mike, what do you have your wife saved in your phone as? <laughs> Jen. Jen. Jen V. No. <laughs> no. Special ringtone? Nope. So I got one for my husband. Come on, Mike. Coach, no, remember, no ringtone. Do you remember your You'd have to talk on the phone to have a ringtone. <laughs> How well do you remember your first game as a head coach and what do you remember being the biggest challenge by the I don't even I don't know if I could tell you what the first preseason game was. I could tell you that the, the, the eight hour game in Miami was the first real one. So but I don't I don't remember the first preseason.